بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله continuing on in our reading of Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala his short treatise if you will taken from his book Mudarij Asalikin, uh, and this is about the meaning of tawakkul. And so, Ibn Al Qayyim was giving us examples of those people who reject reasons when it comes to tawakkul. That they say tawakkul is just putting your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any actions and he gave an example he said likewise he decreed that food would be cooked due to fire being placed beneath it likewise he decreed that crops should grow through their being cultivated by furrowing the earth and planting the seeds in it so if that is not done then it will come to nothing so letting us know that there's a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have to make efforts, we have to strive to better our condition and to attain our goals. That tawakkul, as we mentioned, complete tawakkul is ittimad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab. It is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making efforts or making efforts and then putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for the fruits of those efforts so Islam does not reject that we strive and make effort but rather it encourages it it encourages us to distinguish good between evil to protect ourselves from sin and that we don't make ihtijaj bil qadr that we don't use the qadr and abuse it and use it as an excuse to do sin or wickedness just say well qadr Allah I shot somebody qadr Allah I committed zina qadr Allah I did such and such and such and such but rather Islam encourages the believer to strive and make efforts to attain righteousness and to attain Jannah. Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, so according to the saying of those who deny the means of all these means should be abandoned, meaning their goal, their statement should be abandoned, their view should be abandoned. You have to have, there's a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these reasons to attain things. If you want to have a child, you must have relations. This is in general. Now we see with technology, but it still involves that same, that same asl, and that if you're not cohabitating, a man has to, a karmak malah has to ejaculate, and then they transplant, transplant the sperm in a female. It still involves that process. Allah created, this is the process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, or that it's, and eggs are, artificially inseminated or what have you, all the various uh, advances in technology, if you will, which still do not negate the reason in that in the process that Allah has made as a sunnah. Then Ibn al-Qayyim said, then instead of that one should just say, if it has been decreed for me and ordained since eternity that I will receive a child, become full, have my thirst quenched, and perform hajj, and so on. 
then this must come to pass whether I act or not, whether I marry or not, whether I travel or sit in my house. And if that has not been decreed for me, then I will not attain it whether I act or not. This is those, the view of those people who deny making efforts. Then would such a person be counted as one having intellect? So in, here you see how the, the way, this is very important, that we see from ulama like Ibn al-Qayyum and of course his Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, that they used to use logic a lot. They used to use reasoning a lot, not in a mavmum way, not in the way that, that people would think. And, and this is what I want to drive home, is that Salafis do not negate reason. We do not negate intellect, but we give preference. So our minhaj is that we taqdeem al-naql al al-aql, that we give precedence to the text over the intellect. So we don't reason our way, because if you start with your reason, you will, la shak, you will go astray, because everyone's intellectual capacity is different. So. Bringing back to our treaties, here we see Ibn al-Qayyim is making a munakasha, he's making a debate of their argument. Not all the ulama of the Salaf, in, in general, a lot of the Salaf did not do this. They didn't necessarily, there, there, there were times, but a lot of the Salaf just cut it off. So this is why you have in a lot of those texts, they say no arguing and no debating, and and why even some of the scholars in the past, during the time of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and after, some of them even thought or refuted, you could say, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah because they felt they were displeased, they knew he was an imam, they loved him and respected him, but they f did not feel that he should go and the way he uh, went into the arguments of Ahl Bidah and the way he, you know, he was so just and so, and so knowledgeable where he could do that. That wasn't for everybody. So some of, many of the great Imams just cut it off. La, I'm not going to even deal with these arguments. This is the way of Ahl Sunnah Khalas Mu Intaina. But Shaykh Al Islam ibn Taymiyyah gave you the logic, went in depth, and uh, many people under, misunderstand this. And so, and this is obviously not for everybody. And this is what we see from Sheikh Islam Ibn al-Qayyum as well. He made manakasha. You know, he debated their argument of Ahl al-Bidah and their reasoning. And their logic. So he said, he said, if it had been decreed, okay, he, he mentioned the argument. He said, then would such a person be counted as one having intellect? Are not the animals better possessing of understanding than him? Since the animals strive to carry out the means due to the universal and general guidance. So tawakkul is one of the greatest means through which that which is desired is realized and through which that which is hated is repelled. So one who denies the means, then his tawakkul will not be sound and upright. So here, Ibn al-Qayyim is affirming that Ahl Sunnah's uh, thought or Ahl Sunnah's view of tawakkul is the most sound because the other, some of those other sects, those who deny, some of the extreme Sufis as we mentioned, who deny making a reason, for example, you'll find some in modern day times wearing dirty garments, <laughs> practically living in the masjid saying I'm relying on Allah. No, everything is haram. I don't want to work here. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this. But my rizq is with Allah. Allah's going to give me rizq no matter what. I'm going to sit in this masjid and not work. So this is what you see. You see some of the people so extreme. And you wonder, where's the intellect? And then they want to marry. And then they want this and they want that. Well, I'm saying, is this sound intellect? So then, Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, However, from the completion of Tawakkul is that one does not place reliance upon the means and that one disconnects his heart from them. So his heart is in a state of having reliance upon Allah, 
whilst his body carries out the means. That is imperative. So here now Ibn al-Qayyim is very clearly articulated the aqidah of Ahl sunnah regarding tawakkul. That it is itimad al Allah wa fi'l asbab. And when we look at that, and it just dawned on me really when you reflect on the meaning of that in Arabic even, itimad al Allah. So that means you're putting your total reliance and trust in Allah. That's where your heart is. How do you put your trust, your true trust? It isn't through necessarily your action, but it's more of a, an issue of the heart. The comfort in your heart, the love in your heart, the trust in your heart. Whereas the fi'l, the action, is something of the limbs. So that means, for example, if I want to gain water here, and I say, as I am, I'm hot and I'm sweating, it's humid, it's beautiful. But if I want to attain water here, do I just sit on the ground and say, and start making dhikr? If I had no water, and I've exhausted all the means to water, okay, perhaps. Perhaps I've given up hope and I'm just at my last and hopefully my Lord makes it rain or hopefully my Lord blesses me to come upon water. But the sunnah of Allah is that I would look for every means. We just saw the river, the, the little uh, stream there. So I would go to the stream. If I didn't find the stream, I'd be looking, I'd be searching, I'd be digging, I'd be trying to find some means to attain water, and that means I'm, I'm fit last bab. That's me, I'm making the effort. And the etimad, that putting that trust, is that I put my heart, I don't put my heart in that reason, in that, that, that means. I don't put my heart in looking and searching, I, I make the effort, but my heart and my trust, my dua is to Allah I put my trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the issue of the heart, and that's why Ibn al-Qayyum, he mentioned in that last statement about the issue of the heart. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.